Thank you, Mr. Sarbanes. The chair is now pleased to recognize the gentleman from Florida, uh, Mr. Bill Arrakis, for your five minutes of questions. Thank you, Madam Chair. I appreciate it very much. Uh, I feel blessed to, uh, of course, represent the uh, 12th Congressional District in the state of Florida, but also to, to sit on this committee mm -hmm. and make a real difference, because this is the best committee in Congress, without question. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank uh, you. Again, uh, I was particularly glad to see the bill I, I co-lead with, uh, with my friend, uh, Representative Cardenas. Uh, the Oral Health Literacy and Awareness Act including uh, included on today's uh, docket. So thank you again for that, Madam Chair, and the ranking member as well. This bipartisan bill would direct HRSA to develop and test oral health literacy strategies capable of reaching across vulnerable populations to provide oral disease prevention education through a five-year oral health literacy campaign. Dr. Cassis, can you tell us why HRSA is best equipped to push out such a campaign as opposed to an entity like the CDC? And can you explain why establishing evidence-based strategies as outlined in this bill are important to ensure the agency is reaching our communities effectively? Certainly, I would be happy to respond to that. And, and forgive me, you know I'm from West Virginia and we don't talk real fast here unlike uh, some of my distinguished colleagues on, on, on the committee and, and witnesses. But to, to be uh, quite factual, RISA is a uh, much smaller organization than the uh, uh, CDC, and they, they definitely deal with a lot of facts as opposed to how, how you guys operate in knowing is it a good program or not. They can, they can, with their small size, we can figure it out real fast whether it's effective or not. And um, as, as far as um, uh, the funding for that, you know, it's, it's really a small amount, but it, it is the, the um, catalyst that uh, may help. Again, I've been in practice 42 years and, and I have to speak so many different languages uh, of understanding with uh, all of my patients. So if there's better ways to get uh, people into the office, then we need to, that common uh, red of uh, what works for everybody. Thank you, sir. All right, next question is for Ms. Miller. Uh, I wanna thank you for testifying today and highlighting the importance of the Gabriella Miller Kids First Research Act 2.0. I appreciate everything, uh, and uh, which I'm, I'm proud to be a co-sponsor, the Republican lead. Uh, I'm glad to see many other members joining in support of this, of course, very important legislation named after your late daughter. May her memory be eternal and remain hopeful we can continue to move this forward through the legislative process. We know that all pediatric cancers are considered rare but that's not a rare problem, as you know. And as co-chair of the Rare Disease Caucus, we need to ensure we are directing much needed research funding and attention for these most vulnerable patients. Some have expressed concern that using civil fines to fund the pediatric research initiative could result in varying uh, levels of money each year. Can you elaborate why you believe using this particular mechanism can be helpful in properly funding, funding these uh, critical programs? Because obviously uh, you have a lot of support for the program. If you could answer that, I think that would be very helpful. Well, first, let me thank you for being an original sponsor on this piece of legislation. I appreciate your leadership on this. Uh, as you stated, um, the funding for childhood cancer and childhood disease is um, desperately needing uh, an infusion. The uh, childhood cancer gets approximately 4% of the NCI budget. And what's so fantastic about this piece of legislation is the unique funding source um, does not require our elected officials to um, appropriate the other 96%. It could stay as is. It supplements what, um, what we already have. 
And what's also fantastic about it is that it will be a never-ending source until such time as we have no longer a need for that. And right now, there's such a desperate need. So this source of funding is unique and innovative and will truly move the bar forward. Thank you for asking. All right, very good. Thank, sounds great. I'll yield back, Madam Chair. Thank you.